Okay, I think we're good to go. Hello, everyone. This is Davey McNally. I'm the chair of the Athens City Commission on Disabilities, and we are joining you again live from all of our homes and libraries tonight. Uh, thank you all so very much for joining us, and we have a very full agenda tonight. Um, just as a reminder, for accessibility reasons, uh, please keep your uh, volume or your uh, your microphone muted until you're ready to talk. Uh, also, whenever you unmute yourself, please uh, state your name so that we have a chance for an uh, interpreter to kind of catch up and to identify who's speaking. Um, and we will be ready to go. So, so thank you very much for, for joining tonight. And I'd like to go ahead and call the meeting to order at uh, five, I think it was 536. Um, so no, I was not able to join us tonight, but uh, Carolyn offered to help us to establish quorum. We have uh, 13 members, uh, three are absent. That's uh, Claire, Samora, and uh, Diane. So we have a quorum. And Claire, Claire just joined us, I saw, oh. a few minutes ago. So okay. we just have two members absent. Thank you. Uh, and then if you'd like to also uh, read our mission statement sure. for our commission. The Athens City Commission on Disabilities is a committee of city government whose commitment is to provide a means for the concerns of people with disabilities to be heard to advocate for public policy change, to provide expertise to the community on disabilities, and tell the community about the strengths and limitations of people with disabilities, as well as how the community can help them improve their quality of life, thereby ensuring equality of opportunity and full participation in community life for everyone. Excellent, thanks so much. It's always a good reminder about what we're, what we're doing. Um, let's go ahead and move down to the approval of minutes for August. Uh, we sent that out with the packet with Patty. Uh, if everyone wants to take just a, a minute as we're reading through, uh, first of all, are there any um, suggestions for improvement to those minutes or um, anything that we missed uh, in those minutes? I would uh, move them with any corrections. Uh, do I hear, did you uh, move that we go ahead and approve those minutes? Any corrections, yes. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second, Cesarian. Okay. Any, any discussion about the minutes? All right. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, please uh, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Was that uh, Arian who second or Barry? Okay. Arian. It was Barry? a tie. <laughs> yeah, but it was both of us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then if we want to go ahead and move on to the treasurer's report. Oh, yes. I sent the treasurer's report out. The only um, difference I just want to point out is that out of the uh, $1,000 allocated from the city, we will probably only spend $120 or $150 for the virtual Athena World ceremony. So there will be about $850 that we'll be able to return to the city because they're uh, cutting back, of course, as you know, everyone is on the budgets. Also, out of the um, 880, let me see, out of the uh, American Sign Language Services uh, that Paige and I think one other young lady provided, we had $1,960 allocated. We've expended 800. We have a balance of um, 1,160, so we anticipate maybe another $400 will be used between now and the end of this fiscal year. Okay, great. Um, any questions about that? If not, 
the report stands. We do need a motion to uh, yeah. Okay, do we have a motion to approve treasurer's report? Sure. Very got it. Anyone <laughs> anyone second? Who was who, who approved it? Barry Dilly did. Sorry, thank you. Sorry. Uh JW, I think seconded the motion. Sure. Um all all in favor, aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Um, we will go ahead and move down into new business. We have two special guests today, along with additional guests that um, Carolyn invited from the Outreach and Education Committee. Uh, so, Carolyn, would you like to go ahead and introduce uh, any guests that I, I see? Uh, Michael, I believe, has joined us. Yes, Michael Rodriguez is the um, Director of Production and Student Professional Development at WOUB. Has been there for quite some time and does a tremendous job, I know, because I hired him. But anyway, long story short, <laughs> uh, we've been looking for additional members for the Communications and the Education Outreach Committee, and Michael has uh, graciously, graciously accepted to join our Communications Committee, which uh, we can certainly use his expertise as well as the wonderful expertise we have from Claire. Excellent. Yeah, and, and so, you know, probably 90% of our work now gets done in, in the committee structure. So we really appreciate you joining us, Michael. Um, you're, yeah, just from what I hear, you're going to be a great asset to that uh, committee and, and to the work overall. Um, so first, I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Mr. Jordy Stringer. Um, he is the executive director of the Southeastern Ohio Center for Independent Living, or SOSIL. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit about services provided by Centers for Independent Living and the intent to open a satellite office in Athens County. So I will let you take it away, Jordy. I might appreciate that, uh, Davey. Uh, so thank you to you for the opportunity to be able to, to share uh, this evening. Um, this has been something, and hey, well, welcome also, and, and good evening to the rest of the committee members. I appreciate the, the time. I, I won't take a lot of time. Uh, I know it's uh, after 5.30, and it's about my dinner time, so I, I certainly won't take much of your time. But again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here and share a little bit about social, um, uh, where our mission is access is opportunity. Um, we, for those who may not know a little bit about what Centers for Independent Living are, I'll tell you just a little bit and then uh, kind of give a little bit more about <clears throat> what, our, what our plans are and what our goals are. Uh, Centers for Independent Living are community-based non-residential uh, centers that are run by people with disabilities. Um, they're cross-disability organizations, which basically means uh, run by a number of individuals with a number of different types of disabilities. And it's also governed by individuals uh, with with uh, significant disabilities. So, uh, our, we provide five core services. We think these there these are essential to individuals living the most independent life. And those services are information and referral services. We recognize the necessity for uh, connecting people to community resources, um, whether they be transportation, uh, education related, um, uh, daily living skills related, or otherwise. We recognize the importance of that, and we recognize also that there in the disability community sometimes can be a shortfall in people having access to those resources. So we, we really are, um, that's one of our fundamental things is to ensure that individuals with disabilities are connected to the resources that they need. Um, we also provide daily living skills training services. So if an individual came to us and wanted help looking for a job or was in, interested in, in learning how to um, manage a budget or uh, perhaps uh, manage a grocery list or some, some of those types of daily living skills tasks, we would be able to set them up uh, with what's called an independent living plan and, and they would be able to work through uh, the action steps that would allow them to eventually be independent in that. The other uh, services that we believe are essential um, are systemic advocacy. Um, I'm sure that you guys are very aware of how important systemic advocacy is. Um, so, but that's one of our one of our other critical uh, pieces, one of our critical services. Um, also, alongside that is individual advocacy. We find that individuals need as much advocacy as do systems. 
Uh, particularly uh, as it relates to housing, we find is one of the issues um, that um, is one that is really uh, critical uh, for individuals with disabilities um, in that area. So, <clears throat> and finally, and these aren't the only services, but these are the five core services that you'll find at any Center for Independent Living. Um, but finally, uh, our fifth service is transition. And by transition, I mean transition from um, high school to uh, uh, tertiary education or from or to employment or simply from uh, some uh, residential facility uh, and, and being integrated into the community. There's a lot of there's a lot when it comes to transition. Um, sometimes I think we think a lot when we say transition about transition age students, particularly those between 14 and 23, I think 24. Um, but transition can happen at many stages in life. And so um, we, we take that seriously and we have a person centered approach. So uh, all of those services are provided based on what the individual's need is. The other thing that I really enjoy about uh, working at a Center for Independent Living and being able to help uh, provide these services in the, in the community is that we can be super and extraordinarily um, unique. We can be very flexible. We are not tied to any kind of, um, uh, with, with respect to uh, what we can do for an individual. We aren't tied to any kind of a system or, or plan of attack. Uh, whatever um, is, uh, whatever the needs of an individual are, those are the things that we are going to assist them with. Um, so those are the, the the essential things that we do and we serve right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. We serve uh, Fairfield County and Hocking County. Um, the the numbers in those counties, uh, particularly with people with disabilities. Um, are, are pretty small as compared to the grand scheme of things. Between the three counties, uh, Hocking County, Athens County, uh, and Fairfield County, there are only 34,000 people out of 200 and some odd thousand uh, who actually have disabilities. So we, we are finding that uh, we are serving some folks uh, very well in, in some of these places. And then we're also realizing that we're not reaching um, as many people as we'd like to. And it's been a, a passion of mine and a goal of mine to uh, expand our center services. Um, and so that um, kind of led to uh, an introduction uh, for, through uh, Jeremy Morris, who is currently the executive director of the Ohio Statewide Independent Living Council, uh, a council of which Davey is a member. Um, and so that's how he and I began to talk. And this conversation um, at SOSO has been happening for a little while now in terms of expansion. And we're just finding now that we just think that this is the right time. It's, it's a really unique time that we're in uh, we, with the COVID virus and, and, and all of the things that are happening with that. But we, we've now found that um, especially information and referrals have been something that have picked up um, and we were finding that that's a, that's a need um, that is there and, and, and we recognize Athens as being underserved. We've done a, some research to uh, figure out what, what types of services are available there to individuals already with disabilities. Um, so our, our thought uh, is that we would develop a work group, um, by myself, uh, Davey, <clears throat> excuse me, our board president, uh, some other folks from the IL network and hopefully some folks from this uh, group to help kind of bring into fruition um, actually having a, a satellite office um, there in Athens. Um, we had a board meeting yesterday uh, where this was a, a, a big part of the discussion. Um, Davey, uh, if I may, was elected to serve a term on our board, um, also and be a member of this of this work group, obviously. And so, uh, we're really excited about that. And because of that, we just think that the timing is 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 just great. Um, part of the conversation, I heard somebody when I first came in ask about any kind of uh, fiscal contributions that might need to be made um, to 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 us as we try to bring this process forward. Um, right now, we think that we can do it with our current budget. We have a very small budget, but we think if we are looking at um, satellite office, um, maybe one or two days a week, we think that we can provide those services right now with the current budget that we have. The one thing or one of the things that we might potentially be looking for some assistance with is some space uh, somewhere. We have lots of partnerships um, it, through the IL network with DD councils. Um, in fact, our Hocking County office um, is housed in the Hocking County DD building. 
So um, it's it's that that has been a really great partnership. We do pay uh, a nominal amount of rent, um, and so um, <clears throat> that is something that we certainly. Um, can and, and are willing to entertain. We have been making some investments technology-wise to ensure that um, any staff that we have who are working remotely um, or, or working in satellite offices um, will be able to have the, the necessary technology. So we're not necessarily looking for that. But the main thing that we would, we would need uh, at this point uh, assistance with besides, you know, the partnerships and all the great things and all the great work that we would be able to do is um, the space. Um, so I'm happy to, I, I kind of went quickly. I, I did, I don't want to take too much time, uh, but that's pretty much, um, where, where we are right now. We've had a couple of meetings, uh, myself and Davey, and then again, our board, uh, our board president and myself and Davey, um, the last probably five or six weeks. And so, um, I was invited to, to come here tonight and share this with you all and, and hope, uh, that we can kind of field any questions. I actually did a presentation back in april oh, excuse me maybe it was may uh at with um uh, 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 tina williams and the food for thought folks i i i know that they are a part of integrate athens i believe uh that's a one of the one of the consumer groups um there so i know that this conversation has been happening for a little while and so again i'm excited and and pleased to be able to make this happen, even though we've, there's so much uncertainty right now. Um, we, we, one other thing I'll share with you quickly, we also think uh, we uh, are funded by the uh, Department of Health and Human Services and also by the state of Ohio. I, most of that money still comes from the federal government. I won't explain all of that because that would lead us down a, a, a weeded path that I'm not interested in going down right now. But um, we believe that uh, per the terms of our state allowances that we can actually begin serving uh, Athens County, we think in January of this year, uh, eat with certain of the dollars that we have. So we get part B money and part C money. And so our board has allowed me the, uh, the latitude to explore what that might look like uh, providing to begin providing information and referral services um, as early as January. So we wanted to start this conversation and kind of, get a feel for what the thought is and, uh, and, uh, and I don't know what else, uh, hopefully, uh, move forward, but Davey, that's, that's pretty much what I have. I'm happy to, uh, answer any questions or share any more details, um, yeah. with anybody who has any questions. This is, this is Davey McNally. I think that was really great and succinct, um, you know, introduction to what, uh, centers for independent living do and what you do, um, in your current service area. I also want to acknowledge uh, some of the people that have worked towards this over the years, including Barry Dilley, who's on our commission. Uh, our Athens City Commission on Disabilities came uh, came to fruition originally because there was a Center for Independent Living in the area. So mm -hmm. Barry, JW, um, a few other people got together and start, started this commission, I think 15 years ago, is that right? About yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think we have a lot of a lot of people that have worked and are very interested. The reason I joined the board of the Ohio uh, State Independent Living Centers was um, in order to bring civil representation to Athens County and to southeastern further into southeastern Ohio and fill in the gaps. So if someone isn't eligible for county board services or you know, just needs information and referral, they often fall through the cracks. So this is a way that those people can get necessary services to connect to the right, right places and live as independently as possible. So I just wanna acknowledge you know, all the great work that people have done over the years. Um, that being said, we have just a minute or two available for any questions that people have. Um, not, not hearing any questions, uh, if I'm going to just kind of get in touch with people uh, to set up a working group, the working group would uh, meet with Jordy and I and the executive director of the state board. Uh, initially, we've uh, felt like meeting once every two months and then 
working on some of the issues that Jordy talked about. Can I just have like a quick raise of hands of people who might be interested in joining that working group? I nominate Dr. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need is more work. I, I don't. Need you, Dr. Smith. <laughs> okay, so we, we have a few people that are interested uh, in that. So I'll, I'll get in touch with you afterwards and start forming this uh, group. So thank you very much, Jordy. Uh, You're Mr. Welcome Chairman, to... can I make a comment? Yeah. Just, um, so I've known Jordy here for... Jesus, over 20 years. And, 20, uh, 22, 22 years this uh, this November. Yeah. It's just been great to see his maturity and uh, to sit here and just smile with his presentation. Um, you know, he's come a long way, but he's he, he has worked hard and uh, he was very proud of his... I had him speak in my class, I believe, last year, one of my classes, and I'm just very proud of his development. Absolutely. This is Davey. And I, I, yeah, I've just been really impressed. Jordy took on the leadership of SOSIL, I think uh, about two years ago, one and a half, so, somewhere around there where the longtime director retired. Um, yeah, and it's just great having having some real for, forward thinking leadership and some willingness to explore the expansion. So thank you. And uh, again, you're welcome to, to stay on and, and join us for the rest of the meeting as well, Jordy. I may stay for a bit. I'd like to hear the other presentation. This is the, I'm sorry. This is Jordy. I, I'll stay for a bit. I probably will excuse myself um, uh, in in just a few minutes. But I would like to, you know, at least uh, at least hear some of the other presentation. And and uh, so again, thank you everybody for the time. Um, I look forward to working with you all. Um, please, um, when, once Davy uh, reaches out to you, feel free to to reach out to me, and I'm I'm happy to to talk with with everybody um, about this. I'm really excited. So so thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and move on to the next topic of new business, which is uh, Rebecca Miller, who's joining us uh, from Age Friendly Athens. Uh, and if you want to go ahead and kick it off, go go right ahead, Rebecca. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to pull up my screen here real quick. Um, I guess I really more than anything want to start by saying thank you so much for having me and just make sure that you are all aware that I am just one person um, out of a, representing kind of a very large group of people who are really um, interested and invested in having this um, move forward and 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 Barry uh, Dilly, who is on who's on here, she has been a part of this from the very beginning as well. So, um, just wanted to first acknowledge that. Thank you for having me and wanting to learn more about it. But I'm just one person, so. Um, I'm going to just do a really quick overview of age-friendly um, communities and how we would like to apply that to um, Athens County. Um, we've been working on aging issues in the community since about 2018, and last fall I had the opportunity to hear a little bit more about age-friendly initiatives um, from across the state, actually. Um, and we had this group of folks that was meeting called Aging in Our Community, um, and when that group heard about what age-friendly um, was all about, it actually kind of encompassed what we had been thinking about things that we wanted to do in our community. And so there was a lot of enthusiasm about starting to move that process forward. Um, and essentially what Age Friendly is, um, it was started by the World Health Organization to help cities prepare for um, rapid population aging. Um, and the AARP is actually the United States affiliate for the World Health Organization. Um, and so when we when we looked at um, what they kind of offered, I mean, it's really an opportunity to make communities more welcoming. Um, and although it's focused on older adults, um, the process allows um, gaps in service, specific projects, um, community needs um, to be identified and goals set to them um, with, the, with the idea that it will heighten inclusivity and the quality of life really for everyone. Um, this is a this is something that you know Athens County could do independently, um, but we really like the age friendly model um, for a couple of reasons. Um, 
we reviewed um, a number of other communities across the state. We reviewed their plans and their community needs assessments and um, and saw that AARP was just so helpful in with their resources and their structure. Um, and so we thought, you know, we could really benefit from that. And, you know, the fact is, is that there's a lot of legitimacy that comes with being affiliated with the AARP and the World Health Organization with this kind of designation, which we thought was really um, very cool also. So here's just a little bit about how the process goes. It's actually a five-year process um, that although we have started, we are getting ready to officially kick off with the submission of an application to the AARP. Um, we were really fortunate that the first step is to identify like an advisory committee um, to kind of push this effort forward. And we already had that from the Aging in Our Community initiative. Um, and so although we mark that as kind of completed, we of course are still looking to build our membership in that. Um, the next thing will be to conduct a community needs assessment, and this will take about two years. Um, we will use a variety of methods to do that, which certainly some will be somewhat impacted by COVID, um, but we're going to continue to carry on. Um, and then, of course, we will develop um, an action plan, an evaluation plan. That'll be our goals, um, the things that we identify as a community that we would like to improve upon. And then we'll spend the next three years implementing that. And then from there on out, of course, um, you know, evaluate, um, further develop, establish best practice, that kind of thing. Um, so we're just now at the beginning, we're going to be um, filing our application, um, I think actually like this week. Um, it's it's ready, ready to go and we're ready to go. Um, so the way that the AARP actually, um, they, the way that they work their community development um, through the age-friendly process is actually through um, eight pre-identified domains of livability, which are outdoor spaces and public places, transportation, housing, social participation, respect and social inclusion, work and civic engagement, communication and information, and community and health services. However, given that sustainability has been such a high priority for uh, the Athens community for so long, we added a ninth domain um, of sustainability. Um, these well, these domains are kind of like we're, we're viewing them as kind of like subcommittees. And so each one of these subcommittees will be chaired by um, kind of like a professional or an expert in that field, as well as um, co-led by an older adult community member, um, which I did not come up with this term, but I really like it. And I think Barry does to experience experts. Um, and so <laughs> each of these domains will be co-chaired um, by, again, specialists, as well as our experienced experts as well. Um, so with these groups will work towards um, eliciting community input, establishing goals, and then those goals will be put into the larger plan that we submit to the AARP. Um, one thing that I'm really proud of and that AARP has told us that we have already done a really good job at is we have well over 40 um, community partners at this point. Um, this is just a sampling of some of the partners that we have. It certainly doesn't, it's not inclusive of all the individual um, experience experts that we're working with or, or, or st in students and that kind of thing. But um, we're really proud of, of the uh, partnerships that we've built already. Um, like I said, the next steps are to, um, we're in the process of establishing a survey that will go out to the community. Um, we're drawing upon other community surveys um, that have been done locally, as well as resources that AARP has. Um, we will then move towards trying to do some community meetings um, where we elicit ideas for what's really needed. Um, I think what's really important in this is that although we really need older adult community members to provide input on this, we really need, we really want everyone's input. Um, we certainly think a lot about people who want to stay here long term, who maybe aren't categorized in an older adult like 65 and over necessarily, but want to stay here long term. We really need that input as well. So we can make a plan that's really comprehensive and as inclusive as possible to everyone. Um, so we really are in need of more community input and participation. Um, like any 
brand new um, community initiative. We just established a Facebook page. Uh, we don't have a website or anything like that yet, but we do have a Facebook page and that really doesn't even have that much information on it yet, but we would love for you to follow us on there. And of course, if you're interested in getting involved, my contact information is on there too. So I know that was a very brief overview, but I'd be, I'd be happy to ask any, or excuse me, answer any questions that anyone might have to the best of my ability anyway. Uh, this is JW. Uh, Rebecca, what does respect, I think you said respect and sociability, I believe? Um, respect mean? and um, respect and social inclusion. Yeah, what is, uh, so yeah, I think I know what social inclusion, what's, what, what's at the heart of the respect part? Well, I mean, I think that, I mean, there's an AARP definition and I'd be happy to send you a link to where you can kind of see all of the, what, what AARP kind of determines the right. to that. However, it really can be defined. It should be defined by our community. And actually the person who is one of the, one of the co-chairs of that group is Tina Wilson from um, Integrate Athens and really excited that she wanted to uh, chair that um, subcommittee. Um, she's a perfect person for it and has already brought on some, some good people. So I think it's just making sure that people feel respected in their communities, making sure um, all there's representation of all people who live in the community. That's the way I view it. And right. AP, I think is along the same lines, maybe stated a little different, but that's what we're looking at. This is Carolyn, uh, JW. I, um, ser and, and Rebecca, I serve on that committee with Tina. We had our first meeting uh, last week, and that's the one thing that we're doing, trying to figure out the mission statement right. and what it is we're supposed to be doing with respect and, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. I forgot Miss Carolyn's going to be on that committee. <laughs> so we've got so much great representation on here already. Right. I'm wondering, Cashew. Um, I have a question then uh, oh, I'm as well. Can you hear me? Wait, wait, wait. Here, let's, 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 let, let's let Rose go first, and then Cheryl has a question. Okay. Can we maybe raise hands? Does anyone mind if we? do that because I keep trying to, to make a comment, but then other people are talking and it's difficult to get in. So it's, it's really hard. So and then maybe for full inclusion and participation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's go ahead and go to. Okay. So the, po the PowerPoint there, there was an email, sorry, my, this is the interpreter, my computer is freezing. So Cheryl's a little bit behind. There's a little bit of a lag too. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, okay, so get to Cheryl's question first. So in the PowerPoint, would you mind sending out the PowerPoint, Rebecca? Oh, absolutely. Great. And okay. then, thank you. This is Davey. It rose uh, up. Yeah, let's go ahead and go over to Rose. I believe Rose had a question as well. Go ahead, Rose. Okay, what I wanted to ask is, I belong to a group called the Athens Village, and I wondered if you guys had contacted them. Mm. It's a group of about 100 plus right. people, right. and what we have in common is we're all over the age of 60. Now, it's a paid membership, so people, you know, I don't know if they'd be interested in that, in this, but maybe, but... Um, they're all very actively involved with the community and with each other to make, be able to live in their own homes. That, that's the primary thing is for the rest of your life to live at home rather than be in a, a different environment. And so have you guys ever contacted the Athens Village? Yeah, group. actually, the Athens Village has been at the table right from the beginning um, and really supportive of I didn't see the list. I didn't see the list. So, I, you know, she, they weren't on the list. So, good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, if, that, if I didn't include them on that list, that was a major oversight on my part because they're a main partner. So, I apologize. I'll make that change before I send the PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. this, this is Davey. That's good a good idea. idea. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're running a little short on time, but uh, one, one thing that Rebecca and I have talked about is as our uh, as, uh, age friendly Athens and the committees of the Athens City Commission on Disabilities start overlapping a little bit, we talked about uh, possibly holding some joint meetings uh, together. And I think that's something so if you're doing, you know, advocacy work, there is uh, a very similar subcommittee 
for, for age friendly Athens. So I think what we might do is work on the bu buildings and outside spaces with the accessibility committee. And I encourage, you know, that to happen within the committee structure. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for joining us today and sharing about Age Friendly Athens. Thank Thanks for much. having me. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay for the rest of the meeting if that's okay with yeah. you. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and I'd like to go ahead and uh, bounce down to uh, the bylaws. Do you like to take over, Carolyn? Yes, the bylaws state that you must have them at least 30 days in advance when changes are made in order that we might make adopt, you know, adopt any changes. So I would just uh, like, to make, like to make a motion unless there are any objections to what you received and any other additions or deletions uh, that we accept the adopt the bylaws as they are. Um, I second. I think we had a motion from Rose. Do we have a second? Yeah. Had motion from Dr. Lewis, and then okay. Rose seconded. Okay, gotcha. No, I, I second. No, I was the second. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, all, all in favor of adopting the bylaws as written, raise your hands and say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Well, aye. that was quick. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, we're, we're going to bounce down to the, the, that concludes old business. We'll move down to committee reports now. <laughs> um, the executive team, what we mostly talked about was just the upcoming speakers um, and the bylaws, which we've already talked about. Um, we talked a little bit about the types of committee work that were being done, um, all the fabulous work with the, which the committees can report on. Um, I am I have scheduled a time for October 14th to speak with uh, Dr. Carrie Bush of Ohio University to continue to see where we can collaborate between the city and OU. Um, I'm working on a voting initiative letter to the editor and I sent a letter uh, thanking Mayor Patterson uh, for the press conference time and proclamation on behalf of us all. Um, and Noah is moving today and tomorrow, so he was uh, able to join us. He's moving back into his home. It's all newly remodeled. Yes. He's really excited about that. And also, Diane retired a couple weeks ago, and uh, that's why Carolyn is filling in as our um, secretary tonight as well as treasurer, uh, but she put in her 30 years at OU and is really enjoying her retirement, going kayaking a lot, <laughs> uh, and spending a lot of time outside. So she's traveling this week, I think camping maybe. Um, so yeah, we just really appreciate her and want to wish her well in her retirement. Um, and now we can go ahead and anything else in executive that we should mention, Carolyn? I don't think so, Davey. I think you covered it. Okay, great. Um, so we'll go ahead and move down to the Accessibility Committee report. And since Noah is not here today, and Diane is not here today, I guess I have to do this one as well. <laughs> uh, we had just, just a great meeting uh, last Thursday. Uh, we met with uh, people from the Affordable Housing Commission um, and with Joe McCabe and Frank Lagoda, I think his name was, with Woda Cooper. Uh, they are in the process of uh, building a 51 unit site uh, and a 56 unit site off of 682 and Lyric Road, kind of across from University Estates in Athens. Um, it's going to be all universal design based, which is amazing. That's something we've been pushing with the, with the city for a while. Um, there'll be 12 completely ADA accessible units uh, on the first floor, including four sensory units for people who have, um, you know, who are maybe on the autism spectrum, also people who experience, uh, who are deaf and hard of hearing, uh, or, also have any kind of visual impairment. So there, there are already some, some considerations of that. 
our committee uh, really went through the floor plans with them and made some additional um, recommendations as well. So it's the affordability is great as well. So it's not designed specifically to be HUD based, but I think if you, I think some of the the space can be, you can probably use a voucher, like a HUD voucher for it, but it's designed for those people that are at 30% to 80% of the median income of Athens County. So that's, you know, anywhere from fourteen dollars to $39,000 for a single person or for a family of three or four, 21000 to 56000 So it really fills in some of those housing gaps in our community. Um, and the timeline is to break ground for construction and time to start leasing in the summer of 2022. Um, so they met with us in order to just get feedback, which we gave a lot of feedback and thanks to everyone who was involved in that. Um, Noah, Noah and Diane and every, everyone was, and Tiffany at OU uh, all gave really tremendous feedback. Um, using tax credits in order to make this happen. Uh, Paul Logue uh, was, is one of the co-chairs. Uh, so he joined us for that as well and can continue to, to work with us. Um, and you'll find some really great detailed notes that Diane put together in, in the packet. So I don't want to go too, too far into this, uh, but please take a look over that. It's it's really great. We tabled our discussion of the Washington and State Street uh, streetscaping projects because we just didn't have enough time. Uh, and then we also put together the city pool accessibility recommendations. So Noah and Diane and I and Carolyn uh, all went through and have looked at the pool over the last year or so. So we compiled those notes and sent them uh, to the city for for inclusion and Mayor Patterson did meet us there for lunch one day and we went through and talked about you know just adding some features to make access uh, a little bit better but generally they did they did you know a really good job on it I know people people did a lot of work on that so thank you um, any questions about that before we move on All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Communications Committee, Claire. Great, thanks, Davey. Uh, this is Claire, and um, we had a very productive meeting last week. Um, it was me, Rose, Arian, um, and Dr. Lewis. And um, yeah, it's we're, we're pretty much um, focused on promoting the Athena Award on our Facebook page, as well as getting submissions for the new Athena Award 2, <laughs> which um, we'll need uh, for the next, I think, six years. Um, so it's our Calling All Artists flyer. And um, as far as I know, we haven't had any submissions yet, which is um, a little concerning, but I mean, we'll kind of ramp up um, promotion of that after um, this, uh, this award season is done. Um, on the Facebook page, I tagged probably like seven or eight local arts organizations and it reached about 400 people. So I'm hoping that there's someone that, you know, sees it and is really inspired by it. Um, and, you know, we have some uh, content ideas um, to help promote, you know, this need if, um, if we still don't get any submissions. Um, but but yeah, so th there's that and, you know, just encouraging people to submit their um, nominations for the Athena Award by the October 1st deadline. And then also the uh, monthly letters and columns. Um, I'm sorry, I'm hearing some feedback. I'm wondering if someone um, can mute their mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, I, okay, I think that did it. It was just, um, I was like, wow, I can hear myself. <laughs> um, I think Rose is, though, not, is not muted. I think it's coming from Rose. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like a background, like radio or something. Um, so maybe it's not my voice, but yeah, it sounds like um, yeah, just is, interference. Is the, uh, Ryan, would you mind muting Rose's uh, microphone for us? Thank you. Okay, thank you. And, um, and yeah, then um, our monthly letters and columns, um, the news cycle has been out of control. <laughs> as we all know. And so um, I think our our editors at our local papers are really swamped. So um, I, I check um, every so often to, you know, make sure that something gets published um, a few times a week, but um, we haven't really had that much luck. Um, and I'd hate for Dr. Lewis to have to keep sending reminders. So we are um, developing a workaround where... Um, it's a, it's not necessarily a website um, or one of those like dated blog spots, but it is a quote unquote blog um, where um, I'm sure, you know, you may have heard of medium.com. Um, it has a really clean interface and um, it's very professional looking and um, we're just going to start posting some updates on there. Um, some, some letters, some columns, and then any other features that we want, whether it's, you know, someone on a committee, someone within the community, um, one of the people on the commission, um so so yeah but just remember to uh to like and share our posts as much as possible um our we, we have been getting a lot of engagement which is great but um that's all i have uh, thank you very much Claire. i appreciate this and uh have you have you been getting a lot of uh, submissions for for the Athenian nominations uh, yes i believe we have um Come on, we're still getting background from, yeah. from Rose's computer. I don't understand because she's muted. Right. That's that? very strange. Everybody's muted, but I'm I'm hearing yeah, that. I don't think that's one any one person. So. <laughs> it says it's coming up on Rose's thing for some reason. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to education. Uh, Carolyn and Barry. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, we... oh, Barry's still muted. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Am I unmuted now? There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, we're from now on until October. Our meeting, we have to look at the various folks that have been nominated and select folks. So it's we're, that's in the process. Um, and then next meeting of this group, we'll have to um, finalize the choices um, and the this year's um, recipient. So that's where we are with that. And Claire already talked about the Athena Award, and hopefully we will get some submissions. Um, I wanted to find out, Claire, from you, if there was a way or maybe there was organizations that we could present, you know, I don't know, you know, but sort of like JB, Job W that's doing with the civic organizations, but I don't know whether they're meeting or anything, but something like that. That's a really good idea. And um, yeah, I will definitely touch base um, via email because we have some other things we need to talk about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Carolyn, anything else? I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to say I had a great meeting with the, this is JW, I had a great meeting with the Lions Club last night. Just, they met at IHOP, which is kind of interesting. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't know IHOP had a nice meeting room. It's kind of small, but it's pretty nice. Got a great meeting with them. And so what's so ironic about that is I have always wanted to join that group. They, they've done, they do a lot of work for the blind and visually impaired. So I made them a deal last night that if I join their group, somebody should join one of our committees. So <laughs> I, I think it's going to be great. I handed out the envelope that Claire graciously brought by my house, interrupting my great glass of wine, but that's okay. <laughs> and I, um, had a great time with them. They asked great questions, really good questions. 
So I am telling you, know, I am going to join that group and hopefully we'll hear from them in terms of joining our committees too. That's great. Thanks. This is Davey. Thanks for that update, JW. And thanks for your community outreach. I hear a lot of good. Mm -hmm. I'm honored to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and move down to uh, advocacy. I, I know we've kind of postponed for the last couple of months. Uh, and I, again, we just, you know, really appreci appreciate you, Sly. And Good to uh, have you back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Up here for us, uh, Sly? Uh, am I unmuted? Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I am happy to be back. I'm happy to see your faces. And I want to, you know, thank you for all the support, letters, emails, phone calls, text messages, and, and everything. So it's, it's meant the world to me. Um, advocacy, advocacy group, we hit a little bit of uh, and I'll be very uh, succinct. We been, we hit a little roadblock because prior to my leaving, um, there was some, it wasn't miscommunication, but we didn't set in stone our meeting schedule and meeting time with both the city and our members. And so that kind of delayed this month's meeting. But I was able to work with Patricia to make sure that we have our meetings on on time and where they're going to be located, when and where. So we're going to resume our monthly meetings um starting next month. Um, our last meeting, we did give ourselves homework in terms of looking at best practices of other advocacy groups, both in regional cities of Cleveland, Columbus, and in Ohio, but also nationally as well. So we can make sure that we're staying true to our goals and our, and our mission, but also picking up best practices. And so during our next meeting, that is what we'll discuss is best practices, but also creating some targets and some goals for our advocacy, our advocacy committee for this coming year. Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea. And I'm really, yeah, I think with your leadership and with your team that you have, it's going to really do a lot for advocacy in our community. So, so thank you, Sly. This is Davey. Um, and I'd like to go ahead, if, and if you want to just... Hey, this is Carol, and I have a question for Sly. Did, what are your meeting, uh, your regular monthly meeting days? So right now we're scheduled, thank you for that question, Dr. Lewis. Right now we're scheduled for Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Um, there was a couple different options, but Monday was the best option for us to have. So we have the time slot, and so it can be recorded and distributed out as well. So that it will be on the what the second was next third mondays or the first monday of the month first monday oh i got yeah. you so you started so, at, in in october yeah so our next meeting will be october 5th okay thank you this is davy thanks for that update that was going to be my next question uh I, yeah i have it on the agenda incorrectly so that'll be corrected in the minutes uh, do we have any, we do have a hard stop time at 6.30. Do we have any announcements uh, in the next couple minutes? Uh, so I'm going to, it's not so, so much of an announcement, this is JW, but I shared a PDF of some chapters that I use in my class with a, um, a, a, a colleague of mine and she sent back a website, I believe it's through Yale or Harvard, where you can go and take this implicit bias test and it clues differently abled. Would the group be interested in me forwarding that on to you? It looks interesting. Uh, this is Davey. Yes, please do. I think we all enjoy uh, getting getting that information. If you want to, all right, I'll, I'll have sent it to my, to to Diane and have her forward it on to you. It looks like a very interesting website. Yes, this is Davey. That that sounds great. Um, I think it's the Harvard Implicit Bias, uh, right. and yeah, it's something that I've definitely done, and it's interesting to get results from that right, too. Right, right, right. Realize your own biases. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do we have you? Do we have a second? second, this is Arian. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank you all very much. And uh, I will see everyone else on various committees and also during the commission next, next month. Thank you all very much for all that you do and all the work you're putting in. And yeah, I really appreciate it. We'll stay in touch. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you.